Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, Zoe. I'm so happy to be with you. Hello. Do you know this is our 11th time teaching? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I was trying to work that out, actually, the other day. But, of course, last year was our 10th anniversary edition. And now here we are, 11. That's crazy. I feel like we've learned so much about mm. how to teach it, how to help the students, what to look for. You've yeah. been writing the stories now for some time. My goodness. And before we even get started, I just want to say how great the stories are. But let me introduce us, in case you don't know us. Um, we're so thrilled to be here. I'm Lilla. I've been an art agent for almost three decades, and co I'm co-founder and teacher at Make Art That Sells. I primarily take on new artists from my classes. My agency has commissioned literally hundreds of children's books to our illustrators, so I know a thing or two about illustrating and how to get a picture book. Let me introduce my brilliant and fun co-teacher, art director, and author Zoe Tucker. Zoe is an art director and author of six children's books. Is that right? Or do I need seven? Seven. Ooh. Okay. Seven. Let me take that in there. I think it's seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With over 20 years of experience, she started when she was 10. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She had, and why do I do that? I shouldn't like make younger. I, I like think it's my silver people. stripes are on show. So love. I think that gives it away. Older women love it. She has worked on quite literally hundreds of books from baby books right up to young adult. Her main passion is for picture books and narrative storytelling. She's worked on award-winning books with some of the most talented illustrators today. I'm so happy to see so many of you in the chat. Oh, we've got a good number of people here already. Hello from Belfast and Wisconsin and California and Essex, UK. Um, Kim, would you pop up the poll? Now, Leah says she likes my shirt. Thanks, Leah. I made it. It's a bit no, like you a did picnic. not. I did. It's a bit like a picnic blanket, don't you think? Or like a, I feel like, or it's kind of got a bit of 80s vibes. Uh, just need the big sunglasses and wide leg jeans. Talia says you made that. I did. I did. Oh, I love okay. a bit of sewing at the weekend. I love do you still sew, Lilla? I love sewing. Yes, I do. I love to sew. I have uh, five sewing machines. <gasps> That's just greedy. It's two. <laughs> one I was given as an influencer, this the embroidery machine, a $12,000 machine. It was oh. the best day of my life. And then another one I won a Bernina. First one was Oh two. my gosh. Yeah, I... I know. So I have like good sewing karma, but we're not here to talk about that. Um. Let's do the poll. <laughs> we'll if you join the down. course, we will talk about sewing. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Have you ever taken a mats course before? 59% of you have. Welcome, welcome. And we love new people. We love old people. We love all of you. You're going to find this to be the most, a very, very supportive group in the Facebook group. People are, no one's critical. No one's complaining. Complaining is the language of the victim. I want you to feel powerful and ask questions of your fellow students if you have a question they will guide and help you hello dawn from ohio excited to start have you already signed up for class 61 percent says yes that's good so you've you've bought the you've sipped the kool-aid okay is that just an older person expression do you know what <laughs> that is you sipped where i remember kool-aid <laughs> um when you've drunk the kool-aid it means you you've um bought into the cult or something what is your background? Um, so 44% of you are working illustrators, but want to level up your career. 32% are inter interested in switching from your non-art job to an art career. Yay, I'm all about that. All about that. Did that about 40 years ago or 50, I don't know, something. Um, interested in switching from my art job to self-employed art career, 21%, 20% love to take art courses for personal en enrichment, and then all the rest of this, uh, all the others are bits and pieces. Hello, he Heloise, I'm hi from France. I'm so ready for this class. This is my third time taking it. 
British Jenny. Hey, British Jenny. Good to see you. She is our writer, our social media person, and um, you know her from the newsletters. Okay. So, well, that's good. You can still answer the polls. It's still taking your answers. So let's see. Why do I teach this class? You know why I teach this class? I love this class so much uh, because, first of all, picture books, as an agent, I'm talking to you now as an agent, it's one of the most lucrative areas you can get into as an illustrator. It is still a very strong market. Books are being light, uh, commissioned every day. We are doing them all the time. I grabbed just a few we've done. You can do every style in the book from like super, like um, super, super soft to very punchy and fun. Katie Vernon, the first one was Kendra Binney. Um, you can do a look like this. You can do a look like this. You can do a very graphic look like this. You can do a mid-century look. These are all- I did that one. That's right. And this was- The three. <laughs> Such a beautiful book. So really, any it, it's a lucrative market any style, but you need to learn how to get the gig. That's what this course is about. You can't just show life drawings of bowls of fruit, obviously, and get even if it's beautiful. There's certain things you need in your portfolio, and that's what we're here for. Uh, we've been doing it, as I said, this is our 11th time teaching. So uh, it's a very, it's one of our most popular classes. That's why we keep repeating it. And we really love to teach it. And we really love to see the work that comes out of it. And I'm going to ask Zoe why she loves to teach it. Is that my question? Yes, I'm asking oh, Zoe good. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, I mean, you just held up that book, with uh, which was with Tisha, Tisha Lee. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, there are a couple of things within the classroom I'm always on the lookout for new artists. I say it every time we run the course, but it's true. And uh, I remember the first time Tisha appeared in the classroom and I knew instantly, literally from week one, mm -hmm. um, I can still picture those samples, Lilla, can you? Yes. Phenomenal. And she was illustrating a piece of text you'd written. And I remember at the time thinking, yes, this is someone I want. I want to work with. I want to make a book with. Mm -hmm. And that's for me, Lila, that's it's like a a feeling, isn't it? When you see someone's portfolio and um, you just instantly know, I must work with them. And they have these characters in their portfolio that jump off the page, that have a story to tell. So they kind of pique my interest. Plus also with Tisha, she's got a beautiful color palette, a beautiful style. It was just bang on the money for what I was looking for at that time. So for me, I'm always looking for artists. The other reason I love it, Lila, is... I just love the the vibe of the class. Mm. I love the vibe that you and I have together. It's kind of fun. We ask lots of silly questions to each other. We learn a lot from each other. But mm. then we learn so much from our students every time we run it. And that just, I feel, just makes me, it makes me happy at a root level, but it makes me better at my job as well. So I'm very grateful to be in yeah, this class. I, I think we both have gotten better at our jobs, you as how to art direct exactly more specifically what you want and for me to know what's important in a portfolio for an artist to pitch um so yeah that's pretty wonderful i am going to pop up a powerpoint we're going to look at some top work from last year from previous students and from last year how to we're going to look at how to illustrate a text Zoe about Zoe's brand new text and the, a text chooser to help you, which we created, I think the first time we taught to help people. I'm all about my whole thing as an educator. And that's probably the first thing I am as an educator is how can I make you do your best work without you even knowing it or trying or suffering. I trick you into doing your best work and we make it as easy as possible for you. So you have a text chooser to help you pick one of the texts, for example. Okay. 
um, a few of our favorite picture books and why, what our director Zoe looks for in art. We will workshop a piece of one of Zoe's texts. So if you're on, on the fence about taking the course and you want to know what it's like, you're going to get an actual piece of some of the text of one of Zoe's stories and we will uh, practice. So get out paper and pencil if you like. There's a really nice comment in the chat, Lilla, just quickly from Ashley, who says, as a former student, we learned so much from other students. My work has never been chosen for the critique, but I've learned a ton from the other students whose work has been chosen. And it's wonderful. And I think that is also something about if you haven't taken one of these courses before, there is a wonderful Facebook group which you can join. And to be honest, the more you share of yourself and your work within that forum, it's a safe space for you to share, the more you will get out of this course because everybody lifts each other up and um, bring, you know, brings the confidence. So it's really, Ashley, what a great comment. I'm really glad you put that in there and I'm pleased that it's worked for you. Mm -hmm. um, Shosh asks, is the course is also for who can't draw? You know what? the way you're going to get better at drawing is by drawing and looking at great art. Um, so uh, is Becky here uh, or um, British Jenny? It says that I'm giving out a free three page character development worksheet. So if we have that, to, if you can put that in the chat at some point, and then we're going to tell you about the course and answer questions. And then we're going to give away a free class. Okay, let me open up the PowerPoint. So I'm going to share my screen. And did I say we'll answer questions? PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Pretty. Uh, this is an interior by one of my artists, Osa Galand, for one of the many books she illustrated. She gets a ton of work. And the reason is she gives a lot. She does a lot of research. She puts in so there's the the plants indigenous or typical of the region of this Sundarbans area of the world the clothing the boats the water the birds so she is teaching through her art and making it beautiful plus the characters with their expressions and emotions and poses okay we just went over that Top picks from previous class. Jackie, is Jackie here? Beautiful piece. We will just go quickly, but I want you to see the range of styles. Jan Girardi, just beautiful, telling stories. Biggest, loudest, saddest. Yeah, what we loved about this was the expression of, of the person on the upper left, kind of freaked out in her with her eye popped open. Uh, just the lighting of this. Jean Ruth has taken the class a number of times. How she has the character glowing. Our eye goes right to the insect. Right to the insect. And then we poke around to all the different things in the, photo, in, in the illustration. Here we have Katie Vernon's whimsical style. Now I'm going to add up all the toys in the whole house. Doesn't this bring you back? So yeah, all I love that color palette too. Yeah. Laura Ramos, uh, you can see this is the same bug story. with and, and look how it's a very, very dark palette, but lots of glowing and very beautiful. Uh, Poppy K, really fun style. Look at the characters in the bottom right, uh, interacting with expressions. Sarah Heinrich. Sarah, it was great to meet you in France two weeks ago. Oh, cute. There. That's nice. Yeah. This was one of Zoe's stories that was very, uh, that was of a time period, historic. So it gave ample opportunity to do research for the students. Ulrika Halvox. I can mm -hmm. write my name. So you see, this is a more, um, it, it's not the super rendered detailed style. It's an, um, a more straightforward style, very well done. So you don't always have to draw like, like you know, like where's Jean Ruth or something like this, very rendered. Um, so oh, I, yeah, any style goes, really. Okay, this is from last year. 
Oh, Sayani. remember this, Zoe? Yeah. Oh, she crushed it. Great character. Zoe's going to teach you a ton about characters and what to show and what you need to have in your portfolio. Raida El Tony, beautiful. She breaks up the mm -hmm. page. Great characters on the bottom left, emotions and so forth. Kate Kennedy, so beautiful. And how she does a whole scene. The characters repeated throughout in a really great way. And so mm. it taught us about when that works and when it doesn't. I remember that. Shauna Buck. I mean, just beautiful. Oh, so nice to see them. Isn't it good to see mm. these again? I just, you know, when I did it, um, gathered these images and went through uh, our reviews, I'm like, it's just insane how good the work is. Now, these are a lot of people. This is Clary Huang. A lot of people who have been illustrating for a long time. If you look at this and say, I can't illustrate this well. Well, neither could they at one point. But they kept working on it and learning, taking classes, and getting better with their, their work. So no one starts this good. Colleen McCowan, McKeown. Um, Christina Bivik. Doriana Del Pilar. What a great scene. Just a great location. Uh, Alicia Mortley. Yummy colors. I want to just eat the page. <laughs> love that dog. <laughs> Macy, Macy. Love. Love the dog. The breakup of the page of the column mm. on the left. And then looking out the window at all the stuff. Uh, Julia Freund, the page broken up like a graphic novel, beautiful colors. Here we have Miriam Donovan. I know that Zoe is like wanting to comment on all of these, but I know if we do that, we'll be here till tomorrow because she's a font of knowledge. Font <laughs> of found. A found. I have no idea. I always thought it was a font. I thought so too. A font of knowledge. Violetta Suratosa. But if you want to get Zoe's comments on everything, you take the class. Yulia Degtiava Yareva. I mean, you know, you want to be on the street and go to these shops and see these people. These students got agents from their classwork. Uh, I took Faye Ford on on the right from class and- uh, Adam um, is represented by uh, Dolly Anderson here in the UK. And he's so great. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't take him. But I, I interviewed him recently and told him that was great. Yeah, so, he's great. And I think we've probably, there's been more from class. But mm. this was from last year. I didn't update it yet. So what I want everybody to do right now is take out a piece of paper or write in your uh, notes on your phone or something and fill this out. I, put your name, or do it in the chat want to illustrate children's books you can just write uh, uh, what's in the on the blank you don't have to write the whole thing if you don't want want to illustrate children's books because i like to draw blank and illustrate stories about blank and make scenes that are blank and have children read them and feel blank you can answer these questions or make up your own answers and you can put them in the chat We've got Greg in the house. Oh, you want to read some of this, Zoe, the Talia one? I like to draw animals in all sorts of silly ways and illustrate stories about their day-to-day -day life and make people smile and laugh and have children read them and feel joy and learn. Talia, that's absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Kat says, Kat likes to draw animals and food. Uh, and illustrate stories that are colorful and fun. Oh, oh they're going so quick now. Uh, Jada Hancock, I want, to, I want to illustrate children's books because I love to draw meaningful pictures and illustrate stories about humans having human experiences and making scenes that make people think and have children read them and feel less alone. That's really beautiful, Jada. And you know, the wonderful thing about wanting to do that kind of 
that that genre, if you like, of children's books. There's an awful lot at the moment. Publishers are really looking for books about feelings and about the human connection and helping children navigate um, um, and the emotions that they've maybe had to process in the last three or four years that are a bit different. So um, publishers are actively looking for that. And the, the secret is to doing it in a way that's not too heavy handed. So making it fun, making it light, sewing in those ideas about human connection, but still keeping it. So it's really a story about going to buy ice cream or something, something silly like that. Well put, well put. Um, I am going to, let's see. Great answers, everyone. Really good. Um, Zoe, do you want to read this slide? Yeah, sure. So is this course for you? This is a question we get asked all the time. And we've got some in the Q&A. Do you ever wish you had a picture book illustration career and you were getting paid for illustrating picture books? Are you obsessed with picture books or illustration or making pictures? Do you wonder if you're any good at kids book, kids book illustration? Do you feel that your cool, imaginative brain is your super secret power? And this Ella course says, is for yes. you. Oh, make sure you're, you're turned uh, in the chat to everyone, not just hosts and panelists, so everyone can read your wonderful comments in the chat, the blue box at the bottom. Okay, and... Lilo, we, oh, we've got more. Good. Do you know that I primarily, oh, this is you. This is you. You primarily take on artists. You have strong children's book illustration oh. work in their portfolio. <laughs> I do too, though. That's true. <laughs> uh, do you want to know what you need in your portfolio to get kids' book work? We will go through that in detail in the course. And do you know that one of the hottest markets is picture book writing and illustration and that Lilla's agency assigns picture book work regularly? And I am always on the lookout and I have commissioned really quite a few people from class now. So it's yeah, a good space to be in. Fantastic. Yes. And if you want to write and illustrate a picture book, you want to have this course is for you now for the writing portion. We won't be offering it again till next year. And then uh, you can, when you submit your writing, your, your own story, you have beautiful illustration, which will help sell your story. Okay, click to exit, boom. Um, now we're going to, I just wanna share um, this. This is the doc that I think um, Becky or Jenny put in the chat a link to download this so this is going to help you create fabulous characters and what makes them special so this is wonderful we'd love to help you in every way possible and anything we can do to help you do that and then let me see stop share now i'm going to um going to ask Zoe questions and then we are going to do the text chooser and a sample story oh we've got good stuff mm -hmm. so let's see I'm going to ask Zoe um this is really important and this is kind of the bulk of the course what do you look for in an artist's work to take on let's say you get a manuscript and you go to the meetings with your team and talk about it. And you can tell us what that's like. And then you need to find an artist to commission to go with this story that it's a wonderful text. The editorial department has looked through a million texts and they narrowed down to a few a year or, you know, a small number that they are crazy about. And then they want amazing illustrations. So they come to Zoe and say, Zoe help us okay you take it from there okay well I think first and foremost like Lilla touched on a bit earlier your portfolio needs to have characterful illustrations so by that I mean characters that are like this so they have personality this is illustrated by Alice McKinley um I'm just gonna show it's nice and easy. Mm -hmm. So they've got lots of movement. They've got expression. Both of these characters have a distinctive personality. And I mean, there's a lot that we can, you know, when I see a piece of artwork that I like, I can teach a certain amount of that. But really, the best thing is when I find an artist that's already got that kind of work in their portfolio, that says to me that I am going to find 
um, an artist that has the chops to do the story. So here, this is Alison Colpois. And we've got these beautiful kids and we've got this monster on the back. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a really wonderful text about emotions. So I'm looking for um, an artist that can, can you see this okay? Yes, perfect. I'm looking for artists in this one that um, can convey an awful lot of emotion. So your characters need to be able to move. They need to have heaps of expressions. They need to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And they need to be compelling. So that's the first thing. I think um, I'm always looking for a gorgeous color palette. I'm looking for someone who has the ability to build a world and to bring some imagination to it. So I didn't do this book, but I really love this, mm -hmm. this one. Um, but I'm just going to show you, you know, wow. who, can, who can create just fantastical things. Mm. Um yeah, so that's what I'm really looking for, Lilla. And then I think okay. within that, there's a lot more subtle nuance of what different publishers are looking for and also what are um, not, not really the trends, but let's say, for example, at the moment, there is a very strong drive to create books that tackle emotions um, and give children resilience, give them courage and bravery after the last few years that we've had. So we are definitely looking for artists that can draw compelling children. That's like the mm. first thing or compelling characters that have that emotional range. So when you say <laughs> emotional range, um, sad, happy, confused, yes. curious, befuddled, yeah, only whatever, and through their facial expressions and their body and yeah. the pose, we talk a lot about yeah. what are the shoulders doing? What are, where, how's the head tipped? Is it yeah. looking up? Is it down? Is it, you know, what's the body doing? Is it curled up? And so well, we can do a bit of this now. Like Lilla, I want you to look proud. So, okay. So everybody just look at Lilla. She's got like her head, her chin is lifted up. She's got a smile. Her, eye, her face is open and she's got this kind of pride in her pose. There's a lift in the chest. Now, Lilla, I want you to look frightened. So her eyes have gone wide, her eyebrows are up, her face, look at what her mouth is doing. Look at what she's doing with her hands. This is the sort of thing we will go into in so much detail. We spend the first three weeks of the course getting you to get your characters from that initial character design into something that is emotive and physically able to move across the page and convey all those wonderful expressions. Leah Quinn says, that's my look in week three. <laughs> yeah, oh, no doubt, week, week three yeah. is hard. But um, it's really good fun and we've got some really good tips on how you can achieve it. And it's not as hard as you think. You can start really, really simple. I'm just rummaging through my pile of books here. And this has always been a favorite of mine, Lilla. We reference this in the course a lot. Mm. This is a beautiful character. Greg. He's so great. Mm. Now, so the tricks on this it. one is the beak and the way the tail works, okay? So the character is looking pretty good, but then someone starts to comment. So his beaks drop down a little bit. They comment mm. on his skinny legs. And his shoulders are going down. Yeah. So we teach you how to be emotive. I mean, God, look at these great poses. Unbelievable. Yeah. You don't have to be able to draw like a highly complex scene or character. You can start really simple and you can still get a range of emotion. So there's something for everyone. That's wonderful. Okay. Let's see. What else did I want to ask you, Zoe? Oh, yeah. Can you give a little synopsis of each of your three texts that you <clears throat> provide this year and why are they great for the portfolios part two? Okay, <clears throat> let me see if I can do it because I don't have the text open. So let's see what I can remember. Um, I wrote them a while ago. Or we can um, just open text chooser. Do you want to do that? Oh yeah, shall we do that? That's a great that shout. That will just prompt me. Yes. Uh, oh, Angela, thank you. That's such a nice comment. Very nice. Um, I'm gonna... So I have written all three texts this year, which is really lovely. Um, each time we run the class, we have an opportunity to illustrate a, a character that is an object or a thing, mm -hmm. or you might choose to illustrate 
a some animal characters. So we had quite a few people in there um, when they were saying what they wanted to do children's books for said you wanted to illustrate animals mm. so we've got that opportunity and then we also have um a story that is focused around a child character so let's see the first one and it is this is a slightly old i've changed the i've changed your characters you have cheese and pickle go to the gallery not milk and cookie so your characters oh, are cheese and a pickle and your pickle character oh. could be a pickled onion. It could be a gherkin. Or maybe if you're feeling really uh, cool about it, you could decide to do like a jar of pickles. With, you could go down the route of vintage labels and styling your character. And the idea for these two little characters is um, it's a picture book still, but it's aimed at the younger end of the picture book market. So we're not in board book territory, we're in picture book territory. And these two little characters are navigating life's ups and downs. So they are going to the art gallery, experiencing art, but also they're creating some art at the end and they are working out some of the angst that comes from being an artist, their inner angst. Um, so that's really fun. And in the class, when we get into the classroom, I, I'll perhaps talk to you a little bit about where I find my story ideas because I think you might find some of that interesting I won't go into it right now because it's long but um there's some really fun reasons to why I wrote this one uh so that's your thing you've got a cheese and a pickle character okay, easy I'm good I'm sorry I'm gonna stop this share because I think it's hard if people are listening and what oh and read it. yeah so we want to hear you talk about your fabulous stories first okay so okay. No, that is cheese and pickle go to the art gallery and the second one is Red Get the Blue Gets the Blues, I think is the title. Anyone in the chat can correct me on that. And uh, this is a red, red panda. Yeah, this is a red panda character. So we're in the animals. Um, and this came about, Lilla, because I, some friends of mine, they were saying that we're always, my husband and I are always very cheerful. And I was thinking, you get people that are cheerful all the time, but they kind of mask maybe feeling a bit sad underneath it. So this one is all about feeling your emotions. Mm -hmm. Red is uh, always positive, upbeat, does things for everybody else, but then one day wakes up and just doesn't feel right, doesn't feel great. There's no huge catalyst as to why. And it's how he, they and their friends navigate that. And I've got two boy characters in this one deliberately because I love to get boys feeling the feels. So mm. um, yeah, that's a cute animal story. And then I think the last one is the very big secret. And that is for anyone who wants to draw human characters. Um, so it's about a child that finds a rainbow colored egg in a stream at the end of the garden. They poke the egg, the egg cracks and out hatches a tiny rainbow dragon. And they take it, they take it home. They put it in a shoe box, make a little house for it in their bedroom, which they maybe shouldn't. And it's a story of friendship and it's a bit of a dilemma twisted in the middle of it. So mm -hmm. there was a, is that a good synopsis for the text? I love them. And, and there, so she writes stories that are very visual. So you can show beautiful scenes and great characters. And with lots of emotion, there's an arc. It's a full story. It's not just a bit of story, which is amazing. And I'm like, Zoe, you, every year I say, you don't have to do that. You just give like a few paragraphs. You no, know, she writes a whole story, and which is wonderful for you too because it's just more meat for you to dive into um so let us look at text chooser if you've already chosen your text people type in the chat what you've picked oh yeah that's exciting if you are um if you've already signed up to the class and you are not sure what to choose first of all if you are um building your portfolio out Maybe you've done this class a couple of times before. Maybe you naturally always choose the texts that are about animals. I would say to you, why don't you challenge yourself? Illustrate the one of the other two texts. So you could 
build a bit of range into your portfolio. Um, if you're new to the class, you're not really sure about where to begin. Um, there are some elements that are more complex than others. I would say go with something that strikes you immediately, go with your immediate gut feeling, and um, you can always get through the first five weeks, enjoy it, and at the end you can revisit. Um, Another you have a few days to choose. And after that, as Lilla says, you're gonna stick and pick. So you can't mess around. You've got to pick a text and we're going. Pick and stick. Pick and stick. Pick and stick. <laughs> and another way to choose is, as you read the text, which one do you have the most visuals in your head? Yes. And are you seeing the most? Another way to pick is what seems the easiest for you if you're starting out? What is easiest for you to draw? And don't think that means it's the, you know, you should challenge yourself. Sometimes you do what's easy because you'll do a great job. I so think that's such great advice. Of course, a million times want a bit more challenge. You only want enough challenge to push yourself, but not overwhelm. So if you can't draw kids yet, do an animal or the thing. Yeah. It's and the story. thing text, you know, essentially it's a cheese and a pickle. Anyone can do a triangle and a circle or a pick or a gherkin shape. And we're going to walk you through how to put a face on it, how to accessorize it. Have you just read Greg's comment? Is that what you're smiling about? No, I'm laughing at you. <laughs> I just you read Greg. Draw a pickle or a <laughs> except I'm going to use lots of yellow. Gregory, we <laughs> talked about that in France. <laughs> So if I think one of the other things, Lilo, what you're saying there is there's a huge amount of information in this course. It is packed full yeah. of information. And people who take the course the first time mm. almost are like, wow, I don't know where to begin. There's so much information. And then they come back and they do it second and a third time to get more and more of that information down. So if you're a newbie, just just pick one and get started because you will learn so much. And um, it's you don't have to challenge yourself in all aspects. So if you want to go for something simple, that's great because we're going to bring it to life and it's going to look fabulous. You made me think of something too. Um, for those of you doing the course for the first time, if you can't read every download and watch every video right now or this week, save it for next week or afterwards, mainly you want to do the assignments. Yeah. That's what you want to do each week. That's the main thing. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop up. So Zoe, how oh, does hi. one how does one choose? Is there a text chooser one could use? Oh there is, is, there is, there is a text chooser. Um so and which is great. Lilla cooked this up and I love it. Um we have a new category for returning students empathetic superhero um which is uh what i've written to add in um yeah i love this lilla i mean each of the categories you can just work your way through it decide there'll be something in one of these categories that you will resonate with so for me it might be um I actually, I mean, whether I would do it, I, I don't know if I could do it, but I actually really love oil, pastel, watercolor and gouache, for example, as a medium. So I might look to do oh, something wait, that was sorry. more introverted and I might choose the big secret so I can create mood in what I'm in my artwork style. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're somebody who likes big, funny characters and then you might choose Jester Hipster because you get a chance to make these comical characters and you might choose Cheese and Pickle. So this is a really great device. I won't go through all of the categories now, but have a read and it will help you choose if you are stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And it's just a tool. You mm. may say, yeah, I am witty, amusing and clever, but I just really love the big secret or something. Okay, you know what? But it gets you uh, thinking, it gets you making discernments, and that's, and it gets you to learn more about who you are. Okay, so yeah. that's that. Now, where are me? Let me go back to where I'm supposed to be now. We did text chooser. Okay. Um, so now, um, I just want to say very briefly about the reviews. This is the core, the, the essence, the juice of the course. Every Monday we review work that is due by Sunday, 
Yeah. Like Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, so you have a number of days to do your assignment. And what Zoe and I do, and I'm, I'm, I, I put a lot of thought into this many years ago. I pick the very best work. Zoe and I each pick the very best work that in our opinions, we're just, I would say we choose separately as well. Don't we, we both, we we look through the gallery, we choose separately. And then we have a conversation together about Mm -hmm. what stood out to us and why. Interestingly, the overlap of what we pick for best is like 95%. It's really fun, Um, isn't it? It's really unusual. You know, and, and you can tell most people can tell a really strong piece. Now, This is because I have the highest standards for all of you in this course. And I want you to push yourself as hard as you can in a good way, in a motivated, excited way to do your best work in hopes that you'll be picked. What this does is I believe the work coming out of this class is some of the best work coming out of any course happening today. We have artists who have been taking the course for years, artists who are working professionals who've done many picture books, and it's good for you to see what great work looks like. Remember that these great artists were where you sit. They didn't start great. No one starts great. Everyone starts at the beginning. The difference is they stayed motivated. They took classes. They put in the time and they kept going. They didn't give up. That's why they got to the greatness. Now that said, And then we teach why those pieces are strong. So you learn from them. It's not just an award show. It's so you learn what makes a great piece. Then finally, I do random picks. I will pick a number without looking, and then I'll count down through the gallery and pick five five pieces in that row, random. And usually it's all levels. Mm. And then we talk about those. So you do have a chance. And we do a change one thing, which is always really informative there'll be things that I see in the gallery and I'll really like let's just say for example I really love the artwork style that the artist is working in but the character development isn't quite there I will pick a few pieces like that and just give literally one or two tips on how you could improve that character development and push it further for next week so for me that's one of the most exciting bits of the reviews Lilla because it's lovely to see all the beautiful work but actually we get a chance to give that tiny bit of feedback and if you are able to take to listen to that type of feedback and apply those thoughts to your own work that's gold right we we want you to succeed we really do we are teachers that care about our students so we that's what we're here for okay now let's workshop a piece of actual Ooh, text. Let me find my extract, everybody. Okay. I've saved it somewhere special. Zoe's going to <laughs> read a little portion of one of the actual texts. Then she's going to give you some prompts for you to think about what you, and you can actually draw right here while we're doing this uh exercise so if you have a piece of paper and pencil by the way you can work digitally you can work traditionally with paper and pencil or pastels or whatever collage ink Mm -hmm. paint yeah you can do it all in the class okay okay is everybody sitting comfortably i'll give you all a minute just to get your paper and pencil ready so it's a small extract today from cheese and pickle went to the gallery and I'm going to actually read you the prompts, a few of the prompts first before I read it. So you can think about this. I want you to think about the personalities of the characters as I read it. I want you to think about what mood is evoked in the words, what kind of style you might think of. And I mean, what is the world? Is it a dreamy, fantastical world? Is it a modern world? Maybe we're in a city, maybe we're in the country. I want you to think about that, okay? And have some fun with it. Right, here we go. Everyone ready? One day, Cheese and Pickle went to the gallery. What's at the gallery? wondered Cheese. Art, said Pickle, made by artists just like me, he declared. Hmm, what is an artist? said Cheese. It's someone who paints pictures of very important things. Oh, said Cheese. Cheese and Pickle took the bus to the gallery. The gallery was a big building. It looked like an ice cream cone. They went in. 
Wow, said Cheese. There were lots of rooms to explore. Okay, so you have a few minutes and I'm going to ask you a few questions. First one, can you tell what their personalities might be from this little snippet? So the way I would approach this, everybody, is literally put cheese and pickle and then just write some thoughts like confident, sad, curious, happy. Okay, I'll read it again for you. One day, cheese and pickle went to the gallery. What's at the gallery? Wondered Cheese. Art, said Pickle, made by artists just like me, he declared. What's an artist? said Cheese. Someone who paints pictures of very important things. Oh, said Cheese. Cheese and Pickle took the bus to the gallery. The gallery was a big building. It looked like an ice cream cone. They went in. Wow, said Cheese. There were lots of rooms to explore. So I'll give you a minute to write some character ideas. Oh, I love it. We're getting them in the chat already. Pickle's more serious. Does Taylor. Hey, Taylor. <laughs> I saw her in France too. Ta uh, Pickle is the dominant character. Oh, I love it. Pickle it's... is cocky. Yeah, that is kind of where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. He's proud and confident. He's the artist. He's like, hmm. I am the artist. And cheese is a bit like, oh, I don't know. So it's a bit more curious. You're absolutely right. And that suggests certain visuals too. But you can go against type. Maybe you would think of um, um, Pickles been to a few <laughs> cocktail parties. Um, maybe you would think of Pickles like the tall one and cheese as the little small one. Maybe it's vice versa. Mm. Maybe cheese is is really big. And, yeah. you know, the small person is the confident one speaking as a short. Yeah. Person. Actually, yeah. I'm going to read Caroline's comment here because you're right on the nose here. And she's put it to hosts and panelists. Pickle is confident and serious and cheese is childlike and curious. Well, actually, that is exactly right. But what's fun about the text is there are moments of the, these two characters. The overriding thing is they are friends. And so they're navigating a new experience together. And uh, Pickle is kind of like knows what art is and wants to share that with Cheese. And Cheese is, yeah, a little, a little reticent and shy. You're right, Angela. And is curious. They both have a level of curiosity. But as the text progresses, they have a really beautiful friendship that develops. So I just want to chime in. Kat says, oh. I think it would be fun for cheese to be big with glasses, curious learning, and pickle is a little like a British guy with big, big teeth, but very smart. Okay, yeah. I don't know about teeth. Um, sure. Pickle yeah. is a cornichon that's smaller in size but outspoken. Oh my God, John Oliver says <laughs> British Jenny. So, I love that. And during pickle, pickle with a beret, you're already thinking about your accessories. That's wonderful. Oh my God, a lump of feta. feta. Lindsay, that's awesome. Oh, I love All these right. people. Yeah. That's why I teach these courses. I oh love it. God. So when you're when you're choosing your text, guys, you know, you can just take a you can obviously read all the text, but you can just take an extract like this. This is maybe two two pages of the text. And you can ask yourself these questions. My cheese is string cheese with stringy chair, says Angela. Um, <laughs> wait, where did it, oh, they grow, grow so fast. Um, let's see. Pickle, he's an East Ender Cockney. Mm -hmm. uh, pickle, let's see. Uh, a wedge of Gouda. Mm. Baby Bell, shredded. Oh my God, this is so good. Cheese loves macaroni art. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not getting everyone's name um oh it's fun so I think you know you have an option as well you can draw your characters um <laughs> if you're thinking about this text you can draw your characters as um you know like a character could have a mustache mm -hmm. or you might choose to make your character more childlike and be age five right so well okay so here's some great examples that we you know we'll talk about more in the class but obviously you've got the simplicity of things like this they have a childlike quality in a way because of the size of the eyes on the figure. Um, then you have things like this, where they have look at look at the proportions of the head to the body, how the little feet Big are turned head. in. It's got the vulnerability that you might expect from, say, a toddler. So you're you're looking at that kind of toddler 
uh, proportions again there. So thinking, we'll talk more about this in detail in the class, but we're looking at, we will think about who this book is for and how they want to relate to it. So maybe making your characters old, old men, for example, maybe misses the mark, or it might be funny. You can experiment with both. Don't they need to be five-year-old kids? They do really, yeah. yeah Rather than, what was that peanut character? It, it, you remember the peanut hat character with the trainers and the top hat? Why am I thinking about that? I don't, I don't, I'm not can sure. You picture, can anyone else picture that or is that just me? But anyway, we will talk yeah, more about They do it. need to be. Mr. Um, peanut. I mean, what a name, Mr. Peanut. peanut. Um, but yes, ideally we would be, we're aiming very much in this this bit of the market for this text. Mm -hmm. It's a young first experiences book. So uh, Cheese and Pickle are going to the gallery for the first time. So you want them to be cute and vulnerable and relatable, I guess, for a toddler of yeah. their first experiences. So I can't be... wait to talk to you more in detail about how I wrote this text and what it's about. And there's bits of me in it and there's bits of kid psychology in it as well. So mm -hmm. kind of fun. Oh my God, this was so fun. We didn't even talk about the ice cream cone museum and how much fun that could be yeah I it's like a this. kid's kid's eye view of the guggenheim <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so there's so there's just so you, you saw from this example how your first thought might be one thing but how you can push and evolve and make it so special and unique so um, yeah exciting. i would say Lily, you know thinking about this comment i have i have 10 books here on the table and I think the only one that comes close to having an, a more mature character that's not like a five-year-old would be these guys. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah, I, yeah I think that, that could kind of work. Yeah, and because they're animals too. Yeah. So yeah, animals yeah. don't really have age. Yeah, I think um, who said, Kat said, very hard to stay away from the typical Mr. Peanut mm. appearance. And I would, I would think of, of different ways, like how you know we think of a uh, first thought very of people for a really smart person is is male well couldn't it be female couldn't the person the cheese or whatever whichever which one was the smart one <laughs> oh well now here's the thing they're both smart neither they're one is smart. more smart than the other okay. one is just maybe a bit more confident than the other more confident thank you and yeah. you know could it be female so yeah can play with gender is what Absolutely. I'm saying. You know, can mm -hmm. it be? Does it have to be somebody who is physically able? Yeah. Does it have to be, you know, what is our stereotype and can we switch it? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we talk about too, because we're very much about inclusion and diversity. Now, yeah. you know, I think cheese and pickle are pretty diverse to start with. So we don't have to do that. But when you do the actual humans, you can play around with that. Okay, yeah. let's move along because um, Zoe has a, a, a date with her hubby after this, and we want to. It's his birthday! Yay! Birthday. We're going for dinner. <laughs> okay. Ooh la la! Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> so we are going to screen share. Um, Thanks, everyone. Let me just. Um, <laughs> Oh. Well, while Lilla's doing that, I mean, I literally had a nap in preparation for going out tonight. And then when I was like, oh, can everyone just, <laughs> so I'm going to have to spend a bit of time zhuzhing. <laughs> it's very human in this course for anyone who's watching who's yeah, never we're seen us real. before. <laughs> we're very real. When we mess up, we, you know, Zoe just filled the air well. I was looking for this page. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So this is the home page, And it's very simple to just click. Oh, by the way, these are three books my agency has commissioned to artists. So you can just click on it here and you can see there's a video and you can see some of the beautiful work, what you get. I assume you've probably looked at the website, but just so you know, all the goodness. Here's the contents. Look at this great illustration all about the contents, what you get each week, character, emotions, poses, environment, and the cover. So everything you need in your portfolio, that great character. Um, more stuff here, more stuff here, more stuff here. Oh, I <laughs> love schedule. seeing those. <laughs> the, yeah, 
Um, this is good because then you can you can print these out, drag them off, you know, whatever, and and print them out if you like. Uh, the classroom is very, very clear too. It's very linear. You click from one thing to the next. But it just we're just trying to show you all that you get. Your money's worth not to overwhelm you. Here's about us. That's, that's from a long time ago. What yeah. are these? <laughs> yeah. Is and here's more stuff. And oh yes. Oh, yes. Guest reviewer, Tracy, Tracy Show last time. She's oh, that fabulous. was fun, wasn't it? Yes. Art director from Little Brown Books for Young mm. Readers, which is one of the top hotshot New York publishing firm uh, publishers. Is the course for me? Yes. The answer is basically yes. Unless you hate art, then I would say it's probably a no. Here are <laughs> testimonials. It's always great to read those success stories. I If I'm paying money for this, I want to know, does this mm. class really work or is it just, you know, a bunch of hot air? We have so many success stories that British Jenny, our writer, is always digging up. If you have any success stories, send them to Jenny at Make Art That Sells. But you can read all of these. There's so many more from class work that people get from class. There's just tons more FAQs and terms and conditions as well. So mm -hmm. then you just click on this, sign up now, and there you are. You may also be interested in that. Yay! And that's the writing one. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, access. Yeah, can sign up too, Anna. <laughs> What's that? Anna says, can cheese sign up? Yeah, cheese can <laughs> sign up too. <laughs> so, okay. So we went over the website. We um, have a few Q and A's. Oh, Greg, oh. thank you. For anyone who's thinking of signing up, I highly recommend every Matt's course. You mm. get so much content mm -hmm. and instruction and you improve as an illustrator, which is helpful for your future. Also, we have so many fantastic returning students, which um, for me is just so heartwarming, but they really do um, give so much goodness to both the live reviews that we have in this chat forum and also in the Facebook group. So there's a lot to learn from each other. And if people repeat a class, that tells you something, right? That not only was it so meaty the first time and they loved it, that they're taking it again. Yeah. That's the best testimonial. Tammy Lee um, Bradley says, I learned more in these classes than I did in my entire children's book illustration and writing certificate at UC San Diego. I really appreciate that. Okay. When you sign up, you get your first daily drawing prompt. That's today. Class starts today. So sign up now because you're going to get your prompt. You're going to get to read over the three texts. You can download them, print them out if you like, circle them, write on them. You get the text chooser that we saw to help you. You will, um, you can join the Facebook community. It's optional, but it's it's just for the students of this course and it's wonderful, you'll love it. You will prepare for your first assignment on Wednesday. You will get your art in front of an art agent, me and commissioning art director Zoe, live reviews with the chance of getting your art reviewed by Lila and Zoe. Matt's prep, you can do the Matt's prep, which is on the blog to help you prepare. But um, if you just wanna dive in, that's fine. Registration closes Thursday. And this course will not run again until 2024. Uh, we have one testimonial to read, and then we have a giveaway. We will be giving away one of the course, uh, the a course, Illustrated Children's <laughs> Books. And wh what? Who said something funny? Lisa. What? Lisa's got already with chartreuse. Oh <laughs> it's I not chartreuse, them. everyone, but it's it is not. good. Mm. It's not, but you can guess. Okay. Um, this is by Jody Bogart. She says, I highly recommend this course to anyone who has ever wanted to illustrate a children's book. The class is full of great information. I could not get over the depth and wealth of knowledge that is so generously given. I think what I appreciated most is the love and support from Lilla, Zoe, and all the artists. As a creative person, I feel vulnerable putting mm -hmm. myself out into the world, but Lilla created a self a safe environment to do so thank you jody i really appreciate that yeah so well you know i like to feel safe 
in my creativity too. So I get it. Okay, here's how it works. Uh, this is a giveaway. And if you win, but you already bought the course, you can gift it to anyone you like. So I'm going to say a category. Kim, Zoe, and I are going to look as quickly as I can as we can, but we have a lot of we have a few hundred people in here. So it's going to go very quickly. We're going to see the first correct answer we see. It may not be the first answer, um, but you get what you get and you don't get upset. And then after this, I guess we will answer some questions in the Q&A. So be sure to put any of those in there. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Talia says, what is it with the weird words? Talia, Laura is going to say this uh, category and you type into the chat, the webinar chat, make sure you are set to everyone and not hosts and panelists. Mm -hmm. And you're going to try and guess the category. So that's what they're all doing. These are people they're that have just, been here before and they're just randomly throwing words out in case they're right. They're but we haven't silly. started yet. Yeah, they're just being silly and it doesn't even count. And they're just <laughs> like, that's, it's kind of a tradition <laughs> to guess like chartreuse, my favorite color. And Yeah, okay, everyone you know, keep it together. Just okay, cool your Here we go. <laughs> okay, the category is ba -ba -ba, an animal. I'm trying to relax my eyes if you click on it it slows down you can then scroll okay oh, don't I see it i saw one but it just went by way too fast okay. well <laughs> i'm going to bring back i'm going to give a hint it starts Wait. with a g I can't find oh, it. Oh, no. oh my god. I'm going back, I'm going back. I've definitely seen it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. just, oh no, you haven't got the name on it. You don't have your name on your thing. Oh okay. Well, we can keep scrolling. Wait, All right, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> I've got it. Can I say the name? Yes. Dawn Gillum. Dawn Gillum? Dawn Gillum. Okay, I Dawn. You have a you guinea won. pig. You won guinea pig. The answer was guinea pig. And again, I'm sure other people guessed it along the way, but you get what you get and you don't get upset. That was the only one we could, she could, Zoe nailed down. So um, you write to hello at make art that sells. Oh, Dawn says I'm already in the class. Okay, you can gift it. You can gift it to whoever, anybody you know or whatever. That's great. And... Um, yeah, this was crazy. So you write to hello at makeartthatsells.com. Everyone's like, pick me, pick me. That is, I know a lot of people guessed it correctly, but that's why we say you get what you get. Don't get upset because it's very hard for us, as you can see. That is Louise. And just say, Dawn, that you uh, won. Uh, <laughs> we will be best children. friends forever. <laughs> so... Uh, and oh, wow. you're, Dawn, are you good luck with that. oh, lots of pickle me comments. Huh? That's good. Okay, we'll answer a few of the questions. Uh, Zoe, feel free to grab any and I'll look. Uh, yes, I'm going to say we've answered Shush. I'm going to say I a few of you have asked in the chat, actually. I mostly see digital style illustrations. What would working with analogic traditional tools this is uh Anya Malano Wins Malanowska I'm sorry I'm really bad at pronouncing your name forgive me um so let's talk about that because um on the table here you're right a lot of people do work digitally thank you Anna um a lot of people do work digitally but also I have artists here that are working traditionally and some people who are working in a combination of the two. Yes. If you're working traditionally, and by that I mean painting, uh, collage, printing, colored pencils, any of these traditional media, that is wonderful. I applaud it, please do it. Um, I want you to make sure that you are able to scan your artwork or photograph your artwork at a very high quality. And I want you to make sure that your colors are as good and as bright and as accurately represented as possible. 
And that is all you need to worry about. Mm -hmm. Lots of people choose to do a hybrid so that they might do, they might start with their work traditionally and be painting and then they scan it into the computer and they enhance the color. They maybe do a bit of Photoshop work. That is also a viable way of working or procreate. It all goes, yeah. everyone. It's all about how you present it. And you can just just try, just do something. And then over time, when the course is over, if you want to go back and work some more and develop, so it doesn't all have to be perfect by the course, for sure. British Jenny says there's a weekly live review and the rest of the time you can fit everything around your schedule. That's absolutely true. So it it there's some people who just have a little bit of time there's, to do the course. Some people have a lot of time and it really works for you. You can just pick and choose what you want to do. Again, I would do every assignment each, each week. Um, how long is the review? Well, we try to keep it to an hour, but it's always longer. Always about it's recorded too. So you yeah. can watch it while you're working or doing the dishes or, yeah. you know, in bed at night or on a weekend. So don't worry yeah. about that. Well, first of all, I love Leah's questions. Well, I'm going to answer Leah's question last because we'll end up waffling. But Viviana um, writes, I am highly motivated, but I do not like my art at all. Does that mean I should quit? And another question is, when is it time to quit? Lola, I really want you to speak to that. Okay, sure. Um, here's the thing. I can tell you that you have a, a lot of talent. You know why? Because you say you're highly motivated motivation is an indicator of innate raw talent and if you're willing to put in time and learn you will get better it's that simple you put in time and learn and learn your work so you don't like the art you're doing is probably has to do with learning you need to see other styles so you then find a style not to copy anyone but go, oh, I like that they are really scribbly with their line. Or I like that they're clean, clean and crisp. I like clean and crisp. So it's probably that you haven't found the style yet, the way in which you like working, which everyone has in the beginning. It takes time to find out how you like to work. So I am going on, Viviana, that you are highly motivated. And if you don't like your work at all, that's okay. There were many times in my long illustration career where in the beginning I didn't like my work eventually I did and I got very successful with it so that's a common thing should you quit no never quit never quit something you love never you enjoy it absolutely I you agree better. Mm -hmm. I think also with practice you get a sense of this is uh how I feel about my own I don't really show much of my own painting or anything like that here but um, any artwork that I do myself it's taken me a few years to find that voice to find what feels what resonates with me and weirdly Viviana it's not uh, it's not what I thought it would be so you know as a visual person and as someone who's commissioning artists and who's looking at graphics all day I have a tendency to be able to look at someone's work and think oh I'd love to do something like that but actually the thing that brings me the most pleasure and resonates with me is completely different and not at all what I thought I would come out with but I'm just embracing it and leaning into it mm -hmm. and it's the same with writing I think over the course of writing for the class over time I have started to feel like I have my own voice mm -hmm. and that's starting to come through and I'm finding confidence with that so I think it's about practice but then also being within some a forum like this you'll learn to critique your work appraise it and move forward with it in a way that you do feel happier. And hopefully you find the things you love of, that you did each week, not critical. I don't use the word critique. I don't critique. We praise, we motivate, we show what's shiny and fabulous <laughs> because that's how you grow when you feel safe and supported. Yeah. Uh, Juliana just has a couple of technical things. How many pieces do we do a week? You work on one piece, um, which is put into the gallery uh, where we see it on a Sunday. And we do encourage you to aim for that deadline. Deadlines are really good. That's how you will get the most out of this course is to force yourself to put something in that gallery. 
Uh, we always as creatives, we're never quite happy with what we're doing. You need to force yourself to put something up and be happy with that and move forward. And also you don't illustrate the entire book. So I give you the text so that you can get a feel for the characters, get a feel for the mood of the book, the story as a whole piece, but actually you will only work, your work on character development a lot in the class. We will then produce a double page spread and also a cover. And so that's, it's not the whole book at all. I want to add to that. The first week you're just developing the character and we help you think about that. You're just playing around. You're not doing a full double page spread of a book. Second week is emotions, just the head, the faces, emotions. Okay, that's fun. Third week poses. Now get your character to move. Now you have a character with emotions and poses. Mm -hmm. And then you can make a beautiful spread every fourth week, everybody's favorite week where you get yeah. your whole scene and you pop your character in there. You have your character nailed by then. What it looks like, what it's wearing. It's expression in the scene. It's pose. And by yeah. pose, I mean the pose might be this. The pose might be jumping in the air. The pose may be talking to somebody. It, it just means what the body's doing. So you're very well prepared by the third, the fourth week of the, doing the spread. And then the last week you get to do a, oh God, that scared me. You get to do a cover. Yeah. So, which you get to, and, and that's always fun too. It's kind of easy at that point. Yeah, we have a couple of questions, one in the chat and one in the Q&A that's about online portfolios. So um, do you have to have a website or um, to have a portfolio? Or can you use social media? I, in the first instance, yes, by all means, use social media, start to post on Instagram to share your work. It is probably the primary um, place that I will I will look if I'm looking for an artist I tend to open Instagram first mm -hmm. but when I see something that I like I am then looking for your website I want to look at how I contact you I want to see the full range of your work so mm -hmm. um, if you are serious about stepping into this part of the industry you do want to aspire to have that as well but you don't need to do everything at once no. okay Inch by inch, success is a cinch. Yard by yard, it's hard. Mm -hmm. A thing of whatever starts with the first step. I got that part yeah. right. Partly right. Partial credit. But so the point is, for this class, you're just working on your art. Then yeah. you can take the Money Badass course that I teach with, with uh, Beth, the MBA, and learn how to make your career. You can take the Portfolio Review course, downloadable, instant, and learn how to make your website, not how to make your website, but what to put on the website and all those kinds of things. But one step at a time, get yeah. your art great. And every, you want to get work, the best promotion and marketing of all is great art. Mm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. John, Um, you, you put a question in the chat, but I'm just going to quickly address it. When making pickle and cheese, do we do the scene with the characters for this week? No. And the reason is, I just want you to focus on character design and um i see when i'm looking at um artists work i often see a character in a scene and they might have like an overall vibe that i think oh that's nice but the character development isn't there and by that i mean the character will be standing quite static doesn't have much emotion isn't able to kind of uh, I always use this analogy but cartwheel across a page so we do spend the first few weeks really creating characters that have that dexterity and have that emotional range. And then you put them in the scene. I feel like if we were to straight away put your character into a scene, um, you might get distracted. Now, anyone who is in class will know there are returning students. And when you see the first week of presentations, you might be like, but Zoe said, don't put them in a scene. Uh, you can if you're super confident already. But if this is new to you, let's just mm -hmm. focus on characterization now try to obey people just try <laughs> just, yeah okay i want to zip through a few uh quick ones uh maya palak writes what are our next steps for tomorrow when you sign up for the class you get into the classroom everything is there what you need so that's all in there um there are questions about portfolios and websites that's for another day how much anonymous attendances, how much time do you recommend setting aside each week for the course? What I would like people in the chat 
is to say the littlest amount you can spend to the most amount. Mm -hmm. um, it really varies. Some people only have, you know, a few, few hours a week day and then a half and then an hour or two on the weekend. So yeah. it's really up to you. Other people put in a, a 20 hours. Yeah. It's really up to you. You can do so. So just be realistic about what you have. Also, if you can cut out watching, watching shows at night and going on your phone, spend mm. time on your art, make your art a priority. Yeah. Get, get up an hour earlier. Cook. Yeah. Get people to cook, cut out, you know, take yourself very seriously. Mm. Okay. Um, Dawn says, does cheese and pickles have to literally be cheese and a pickle or jar of pickles? I would st stay with the brief uh, yeah. because if you start opening it up, you'll never decide, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe I should do an apple and a, a tote bag. No, just stay with the assignment, okay? I love just that. I don't know why it. I didn't choose those two. Apple <laughs> and tote bag go to the gallery. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, let's see. What is the structure of the course? Shosh asks, it's all in, if you go to the website, you will see all of that. And she probably asked, yeah, she asked that earlier. Um, oh, Leah, you asked such nice questions. Might you two like to share how you two connected mm -hmm. and created the course? Oh, we'll have to do that another day. Um, yeah. It seems. We can also talk more about trends and what I am um... mm -hmm. I've just had feedback from the Bologna Children's Book Fair mm. from several of my clients. So we can dig into that a little bit in the classroom. Um, just talking, I mean, trends is a funny word. We don't tend to take too much notice of it, but there are definitely things that I am um, being asked to look for mm. and um, styles that I'm being asked to look at. So we can talk more about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always say, make your own trends. Yeah. Uh, know the market, understand what the needs are, understand what companies and clients are looking for, and then make your own trends that fit. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, um, Holly Rose asks if the um, children, she says children's book illustration is based in the UK. It seems like a lot of children's book illustration is oh, based yeah. in the UK. Is that true? Um, to be honest, Holly, I mean, in terms of who I commission from artists, I have uh, several artists in Australia. I've worked with someone in South China. Um, I've just finished working with someone in Italy. So for me, it is very universal and international and I'm commissioning people all over the world. And in terms of the publishers, we do have my predominantly I work for UK publishers but I have worked for US publishers as well um, but there's a strong publishing market in pretty much every country especially in Europe um, the UK the US and I'm sure South Asia as well well you the US has the most largest most and largest publishers so I would definitely say it's not just UK based I mean Zoe's mm -hmm. more UK based we work with publishers in the US, all the top publishers and UK, doesn't really matter. Um, the course doesn't, it, the course helps you make great work and you can submit to any publisher in any country. Um, it doesn't matter, Talia is a Canadian. No, art is art. Canadian it's, artist. It's art is art. You do great art and people want your great art. Yeah. She writes, few. <laughs> uh, the, the borders and countries don't matter so much now with the internet. Oh. In the old days, things were different. Okay, I think we're going to wrap up. And just say I'm on the countdown now for dinner, folks. You no. Know. <laughs> okay, um, I think that pretty much wraps up what we've done. So make sure you go. Oh, there was one up. question, Lula, that came up in yes. the chat that flew past, okay. which is about the copyright of the text. Sure. Okay. Um, so just to reiterate, the copyright for the, all of the texts is mine. Um, but you're, I'm, you can use them to do character development and you can have those pieces in your portfolio. Um, I would prefer that you don't illustrate the whole text and um, take your portfolio around with the whole text in it. But if you do have any interest from publishers that like the work, then you can refer their comments or their um, inquiries about the text back to the Matt's team and they will pass it on to me. I hope that answered that question. I'm, in a going to nutshell. I'm going to say in a nutshell, it is Zoe's text. She owns the copyright, but you are only 
pitching your artwork, not her story. She owns the story. And if some, if you send your art and people say, oh, I love the story, the art director or editor says, I love the story, say, oh, great. Here's Zoe's contact. Zoe is with Matt's and contact her and, and, and they can uh, work with Zoe on the story. But your art is your art and you own your art. So there you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to close up shop. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Uh, it would be my honor to be your teacher. I mean that. I love to teach and I love to help you. And I want your careers to succeed. So I do hope you sign up and join us. Yeah, Remember, me too. class starts today. So don't wait because I don't want you to get behind. And I will see. You've already signed up. Make sure you've joined the Facebook group mm -hmm. and get chatting with all of your new student friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you in face in the Facebook group. We'll pop in. And I think that's it. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll nice to be back, you. Willa. Yes, we'll see you next Monday for five Mondays. We'll be doing Zooms like this of reviewing work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, nice. everybody. All right. See you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye.